What's going on, everybody, and welcome back to Bourbon of the Week. My name is Chris. I'm going to be your host for today. And whether you're tired of it or not, we are reviewing another Penelope Architect. This is build number three. We're going to need way more than that because I can promise you I loved the first two. So build number three should fall right in line. But everybody knows before we get started on all of that, time for the traditional sip. Cheers, y'all. Maybe, maybe not. First of all, shout out Joe Bourbon in my Discord for hooking me up with this bottle. I am very excited to have this bottle for one specific reason. I have this tasting kit from greatwhiskeychallenge.com. Check them out. Again, link in the description below. BOTW10 at checkout. This is a blind tasting kit. It's awesome. I'll link the video above on how I use it. But I'm excited about having three bottles with the exact same mash bill, the exact same proof, the exact same price tag, because you know we do price, taste, drinkability, and yet they're all three different. So build one, build two, build three, going through three different stave processes to make them different. And the reason that I'm excited about it is because I can truly put my ranking system to the test. And what I mean by that is in the past, I've been able to compare things just on taste because proof might be different. And if you blind something with different proofs and you don't know which one's which proof, then you can't say this proof is better than that proof because you just don't know. Same thing with price. If I blind it and the prices are different, I might think this is the $60 bottle and this is the $40 bottle and vice versa. So it's exciting to have all three bottles, the same proof, the same price, and yet being different enough that I can put my ranking sheet to the test after I rank this one to see if it actually falls that way in a true blind. Not only that, but I love the people over at Penelope, so having another bottle in my collection isn't a bad thing at all, but you know the rules, price, taste, drinkability, let's get into it right now. So if you don't know about the Penelope Architect series, they're taking their four grain mash bill that they get from MGP and they're putting it through a staves project. They happen to use French oak staves for this particular project here, and this one has all of the different builds on the back. This is build number three. And one of the many things that I do love about Penelope is their one pagers online. I talk about them all the time. You can go on there, you can download them, you can print them out, you can just view them online if they want but they tell you everything that you need to know about the bottle. They're very transparent as a company. But build number three was the exact same one pager as build number two, at least as far as I saw. And yet with that, I believe I get a very different experience with build number three. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more during taste, but let's get into drinkability right now. This comes in at 104 proof, a great proof when it comes to this bottle right here. Let's take a sip and let's talk about drinkability. So I'm trying to think back and remember the drinkability scores on build one and build two. I haven't drank build one in a long time. Build two, I remember, sipped a little bit hot for me, and I remember build one being pretty easy to drink. But at the same time, this seems to drink more like build two than build one. It's not anything terrible. It's not like overwhelming when it comes to the heat on this. I just seem to get a little bit more of that spice, a little bit more of that ethanol kick. And I think that it sips more like build two than build one. So let's take one more sip and give this a score. So when it comes to drinkability, I'm going to give this like an 8.00, a flat 8. I don't think this drinks higher or lower than its proof. And when it drinks right around its proof, I think an 8 is a fair spot for it. Again, there are some bottles that are better at disguising the ethanol kick. I don't think this is exactly trying to do that. But at the same time, it's not doing a bad job at drinking at 104 proof. 8.00 for me. And up next, we're going to pour a little bit more here because we're getting into taste. And I really want to get on the flavor profile on this. So here's the deal when it comes to taste. This is 104 proof, so you're getting enough of that ethanol kick that you're truly going to appreciate the four grain signature mash bill on this, which I believe is 75% corn, 15% wheat, 7% rye, 3% malted barley. And the other thing about this is it's finished in French oak staves, hand selected by the guys and girls over at Penelope, which is awesome. They get to go to these places and actually pick out the French oak staves that they wanna use, and they tell you about them on their one pagers. Now bringing up that one pager and the French oak staves, these are the same French oak staves that they used and build two. So my question is if this is the exact same mash bill, it's the exact same proof, it's the exact same age, and it's the exact same French oak staves, what could be different to make this taste different? And I think I have an idea. Now don't quote me on this. I haven't reached out to anybody at Penelope. I haven't confirmed or verified this, but I believe that build two and build three are the exact same thing, except build three has a longer finishing process with those French oak staves. And if you know anything about finishing or anything about staves projects, I've learned this through Maker's Mark. They put out literally multiple barrel picks with different staves for different amounts of times, and they give you very different dynamic flavors. And I think that's what's going on here because the flavors that I get on this are more of that oak, more of that tannin coming out of what I think is the French oak stave because you still get a lot of that French oak taste, that French oak influence, but yet you're still getting a lot of the Penelope in this as well. 
So I think that's what's going on here again. Don't quote me on that. That being said, you guys know I do not love an oaky, smoky, tannin, leathery flavor profile when it comes to my bourbon. And not that you're getting a lot of that, don't get me wrong at all, but compared to the other two builds, which came out a little bit fruitier, a little bit easier, a little bit softer to drink, this comes out with a lot more of that age behind it, also only being four and five years old, and it still gives you a lot of that oak, a lot of that tannin, a lot of that dryness on the end. So this isn't my particular flavor profile when it comes to what I'm looking for, but I understand if you don't like build one, you might like build three. And if you don't like build three and you haven't had an opportunity to, go try build number one. All that being said, we still have to give this a score. I'm gonna give this like a 7.25 for my particular flavor profile when it comes to a bourbon with this one on taste. And last but certainly not least, that's gonna get us into price on this bottle and coming in at $55, just like the other two bottles, they should score pretty similarly. The only thing I'm contemplating is I didn't love the flavor profile on this one as much as I like the other two, but I think that Penelope is trying to like paint a picture or tell a story about the French oak staves that are going into this. The first one seems light and fruity. The second one gives you just a hint of that leather, a hint of that oak, while the third one is really bold in your face with those aging, those oaks, those tannins, and everything like that. So I love what they're doing here. I think it tells an amazing story, but at the same time, I can't give it the same price score that I gave the other two if I don't like the bottle as much. So let's think about it one more time. I still gotta keep it in the eights on this, and the reason why is because just because I don't like it doesn't mean it's a bad bourbon. There are bourbons out there that I can tell you right now are not good, they don't taste good. This tastes good, it's just not what I'm looking for, it's not my preference, and I always say that about all of my reviews. Maybe our palates have aligned in the past, so maybe you'll skip on this bottle, but maybe at the same time you're like, no, I kinda like that flavor profile, let me go out and try it. So let's put this at 8.52 when it comes to price on this. But listen, I got a short bourbon bomb of the week dropping some cool information about Penelope, so let's send it over to that real quick. Cheers, y'all. Listen, this is the part where I gotta tell you, click that like, click that subscribe button if you like this kind of content at all. I'd really appreciate it. We just passed 3,000 subscribers. We're trying to keep this thing rolling, but some breaking news coming out of Penelope, kind of, sort of, really. The last time they changed their Instagram color, it was a P, it used to be white, then they changed it to blue, boom, the Architect series came out. Recently, they just changed it to orange, and I started to question it, what's coming next from Penelope? And lo and behold, we have a new finishing project coming out of Penelope with their signature four grain mash bill with a VDN finish, which stands for Vino de Naranja. I'm not Spanish, I don't know if I messed that up or not, but VDN finishing is the next thing coming out of Penelope. And you, like me, are probably thinking, I don't know anything about wine, what does that mean? Well, vino is a white wine, and vino de naranja means orange wine. So what they do is they take a white wine, and they just put orange peels in it, they take that citric flavor, that orange flavor, and infuse it into the wine. Obviously, these are all put into barrels, and then Penelope is gonna take these barrels and either use staves, or maybe the barrels in general, and they went to Spain and picked out their own barrels. Amazing project as well. Very excited for the future of Penelope. I will be looking out for that bottle. Should have put it in my actual five bottles that I'm looking for this winter, but I just found out about it recently. At this point, Penelope could basically bottle water and I would probably buy it. I don't want you to think my reviews are skewed because of how much I love the company. I'm definitely giving you an honest opinion on this, but at the same time, I love the people involved. I love the product that they're putting out. And I love that they're moving towards the future and not just sticking with one particular bottle. But this bottle came in at a 7.92, not a bad spot for it at all. Again, I don't think it's my favorite out of the three, but knowing what they're doing with this entire process and knowing the progression between the three bottles, I'm very excited to see these side by side by side in a blind taste test to see if my ranking sheets uphold. And if they do, great. And if they don't, maybe we'll have to go through and try this one more time. But listen, that's where we're gonna leave you for today. Make sure you check me out on Instagram, at Bourbon of the Week. Go click that follow button over there. If you wanna help support the channel out financially, check out our Patreon link in the description below. If you wanna come chat with us 24 seven, we have a Discord, 200 members. Come chat with us. Come see what's going on here at Bourbon of the Week. As always, please don't drink and drive. Always drink responsibly and stay healthy, stay happy, stay drinking. Cheers, y'all. Okay. <laughs>